Welcome to the OLE Daily Reflection for Saturday, January 22nd. Today, the Catholic Church in the United States marks the 49th anniversary of the Supreme Court decision Roe v. Wade. The decision involved the case of Norma McCorbney, known under the legal pseudonym Jane Roe, who in 1969 became pregnant with her third child. McCorbney wanted to receive an abortion, but in Texas, where she lived, abortion was illegal except when necessary to save the mother's life. Her attorneys, Sarah Weddington and Linda Coffey, filed a lawsuit on her behalf in U.S. federal court against her local district attorney, Henry Wade, alleging that Texas abortion laws were unconstitutional. A three-judge panel of the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of Texas ruled in her favor. Texas then appealed directly to United States Supreme Court. On this day, in January of 1973, the Supreme Court issued a 7-2 decision in McCorbney's favor ruling that the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment to the United States Constitution provides a right to privacy, protecting a, pr- a pregnant woman's right to choose whether to have an abortion. The bishops of the United States of America therefore ask all Catholics to take today to pray in a special way for the legal protection of all unborn children. And there, that, and there may be a way forward for that right to be extended to all children to be born in the future. The second reading for the Daily Mass comes to us from the third chapter of St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians. It reads, Brothers and sisters, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named that he may grant you in accord with the riches of his glory to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner self. And Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the holy ones what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to accomplish far more than all we can ask or imagine by the power at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. These powerful words of St. Paul challenge us in a couple regards. First and foremost, He reminds the Christian community of Ephesus and each of us that we need to be constantly looking towards Christ and his teachings in order to grow in holiness and discipleship. We are truly called to look at the breadth and length and the height and depth of Christ's love. And through this examination of our lives, we should deepen our faith, making sure that we see our individual sinfulness and flaws more clearly and are committed to changing them. Because again, all of us are called by Christ to enter more deeply into relationship with him and through our own lives of discipleship to imitate him more fully. But also you'll notice that St. Paul's also telling this community at Ephesus and us that it is Christ himself who will give us the grace to accomplish all of this. We cannot do any of this on our own. So not only does he provide us guidance on how to live, but he will provide us the grace to do it as well. So again, we are never by ourselves. We are never alone. And we just have to work to make sure that we fulfill what Christ is asking of us in our lives. So on this day, where we pray for the legal protection of unborn children, I think we have to acknowledge that the political discussion around abortion is filled with polarization, and thus sinful actions can be taken by both sides of this issue, those who are pro-choice and those who are pro-life. Therefore, I think the challenge is is that all of us need to make sure that we still respect 
love, but yet challenge each other so that we can work towards solutions that reflect what the church teaches us and reflects what Christ wants for us and reflects what would provide us the most hope and strength as we move towards the future. So again, the church wants us to protect the unborn, but also the church wants us to help those who are struggling with unplanned pregnancies. The breadth and length and height and depth of Christ's love is such that we can do both, and we need to do both. And again, there will probably be no easy solution to any of the challenges around this particular issue. But again, Christ does call us to imitate him in his love and mercy towards all, and he will give us the grace to accomplish it. So we just keep moving forward, we keep seeking solutions, we keep praying for the grace to enact what would reflect God's law and also help us to establish his will for all people in this world. So on this day, a prayer for the protection of the unborn. We shall pray that abortions come to the end. But also each of us need to acknowledge that we need to grow in our own faith, in our own imitation of Jesus Christ, in order to make this happen, and in order to address any other challenge that exists in our lives. Our Lady of Victory, pray for us.